Hey everyone, let's make a tower defense game in Unity. To get started, we're going to need to set up our project and our sprites as well. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to open up Unity Hub. Once you get in here, you can click New Project. We've got a few options here, but the one we'll want to choose is the 2D Universal Render Pipeline. All this does is give us a bunch of added features that allow us to do things like lighting later on. If you started off with just a 2D core, don't worry, you'll still be able to do what we do in this video. You just might have to download some extra features later. Over here, we've got a couple of options. You can choose where you'd like to save the file, and you can also give it a name. Once you've done all that, we can just create our project. Now, when you first get into your project, it will have Unity's default setting, which I'm going to be keeping for this video. But essentially, we just have our hierarchy on the left here, which is where any objects that we put into our game will appear. You'll start off with just a camera and a global light. Down here's your project window, which has all the folders where we can import things. And on the right is your inspector, where we can just make tweaks and changes to objects we've put in the game. So you'll notice right now the global light is selected, and so we have different components to do with that light. And if I switch to camera, it would have other components. We're just going to get started and get our sprites put into the game. So first off, I'm just going to change my view here. There's a little zoom button down in the bottom. I don't like these folders. They feel messy to me. I prefer to zoom out so that I can see them in a list. View. Now at this point, we've got a couple of things. We've got scenes, settings, and then our URP settings. I'm just going to create a new folder right off the bat. So we'll go create, up to folder. I'm going to call this one sprites. We can open that up. And at this point, we're actually ready to start importing the sprites for our game. I'm just going to minimize my view here. Unity supports a number of different image files. I'll be using mostly PNGs here, but also some PSDs as I like to work in Photoshop. You don't need a lot of images at this point, but since this is a tower defense game, I suggest having a, some sort of a tower as well as something to defend it against. To import, you can just drag it right into your assets folder. You'll see a little green plus sign to show that it's working. You'll also want to do the same with your enemy that you're using. In my case, I'm actually using a whole sprite sheet, which is animated. If you have an animated sprite sheet, great. If you just have a single sprite, don't worry, that'll work just fine as well. Optionally, I'll show you how to use some other things like a tile set. So if you have tiles that you would like to use in your game, I'll show you how to create a tile map and be able to put those in. To make things look pretty, I'll also be adding in a background sky image totally optional, but if you have one, you can drag it in while you're at it here. The final file is one you won't need until much later in the series. It's just of one of my defenders and has their walk and idle animations. However, the reason I show you this one is because it is a PSD or Photoshop file. I sometimes like to import my files in this format because as you can see in the bottom right, there's a lot of different layers to this and I don't want to lose those. I want to be able to open the file and do editing later on if I need to and keep all the layers intact. Sending them into Unity as a PSD file allows me to do that. All right, at the moment we now have some sprites in our sprite folder, so we might want to start by actually putting them in the game. So let's take our tower and if you drag and drop it up into your hierarchy here, you'll notice that it appears. Now, first off, you can't see much going on here. I do have this rectangle here that represents my camera. And in the middle there is my tower, but there's a bunch of icons over it. Those are called gizmos, and they can often be helpful. But if you don't like them, which at the moment I don't need them, you can go over here to your top menu and just toggle the visibility of gizmos. Now, you'll notice that I also lost my camera at that point, which might not be desirable. Once we've got our tower in there, you can click on it. And if you want to, you can move it around your screen using the move tool here. You'll notice it's quite small. And if we zoom in, it's also kind of blurry. This can be easily fixed by going down to our sprites folder and clicking on the tower. Over our, in our inspector then, we can change a couple of features. First of all, we're gonna look at pixels per unit, which is set to 100 by default. Most of my sprites are actually 32 by 32 pixels, and so I'm just going to set it to that. You can choose whatever works best for yours. Now when I click Apply, it will apply those changes, and you'll notice my tower gets much larger. Next up, we're just going to head on down to the filter mode. Right now it's set to bilinear, which actually is a smoothing tool, which is what's giving us that blur effect. For pixel art, we want things crisp and with sharp edges, so we'll go to point no filter. Finally, at this point, you might notice that you're getting a little bit of discoloration. To fix that, you can just go to Format here and switch it from Automatic to RGBA 32-bit. Don't forget to apply those changes. All right, at this point, you have your first sprite. It's ready to go. Now, obviously, if you're importing lots of sprites, this could take a long time, and so you can speed up the process by clicking one sprite, holding Shift, 
and then clicking the other so you have them all selected at once and you can just do a big batch. We can make them all 32 pixels per unit, give them all no filter and change their format to 32 bit. Then don't forget to hit apply. Now all of our sprites will be ready to go. So at this point I can, for example, drag my blue sky in. Now sometimes at this point you'll run into a situation where your sky will actually render in front of the tower. This is easy to fix. You can just click on your sky over in the hierarchy. You'll notice there's two components here. The first is transform, which keeps track of position, rotation, and scale. So you'll notice as I move it around the position numbers change. I'll set those back to zeros. There's also a sprite renderer here. Now if we head down to the sorting layer and order in layer, you can see that both the sky and the tower are set to zero, so it's not sure which one to render in front. We can simply move the sky to a negative number in order to move it into the background. Now one last thing that I want to do in this video is just show what to do with a sprite sheet. So you'll notice if I click on my CRT robot that it is an animated sheet with a whole bunch of animations. And when I put it in the game it definitely looks out of place. So what we'll do is we'll just click on it down in our sprites folder head over to the inspector where we'll set it to be multiple for our sprite mode. Don't forget to apply that and now go to your sprite editor. At this point we're just going to slice up the image so that it has multiple sprites instead of making them all one big sprite. If you click slice and then change automatic to grid by cell size. This one was actually made on a 36 by 36 grid so I'll select that. I'll just select slice then up in the top corner here click apply and it will slice up that image. Now you'll notice that I did make it 36 by 36 even though I said earlier my grid is always 32 by 32 and all that means is that this specific sprite will be a little taller than a single square in my game which I will often do on purpose just so that I get different sized characters in my game. Now if you click on slice there's one other feature and that is the keep empty rects. All that does is simply mean that if you were working with a sprite sheet that had some empty spaces it would just create empty rectangles for them. And this is just useful if it is a work in progress and you plan to add more sprites in the future. Otherwise, you can just leave it unchecked. All right, let's close our sprite editor. So now when I look at my CRT robot, I can click the down arrow and we'll see all the different files. I'm just going to drag that first sprite up into the game. And now we've got my robot in there. Now I've just gone and done the same thing with my warrior sprite, so I can now grab her first picture here, drag it into my hierarchy, and just like that I have a defender sprite in my game. One other factor you may have is that in my case my background is much larger than my screen size, and generally speaking we're not going to need it to be any larger for this game, so I'm just going to head over to my transform and change the scale. You'll notice point one's a little too small, so we'll try point two. That's looking better. At this point I'm also just going to head into game mode where I can see what this will look like when we play the actual game and you can see the towers being cut off. So I'll pop back into scene view. And at this point I'm just going to manually use my rec tool to make it so that my background's the exact same size as my screen. Now it's really easy to see how things are fitting and I can just move that tower into place. And we're good to go. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.